I'm going to set up some very simple levels. I'll probably make like four or five, and then we will jump back in. So this part, I'm just going to speed through. It's not actually something you need to follow exactly. Make your own levels. Enjoy. Uh, here we go. After a little bit of time, I have now made three levels, so nothing too crazy. You go through one, each level is two screens, you just move through, and then we'll go to the end. Again, this is set up that you can take it, expand it, make much more complicated puzzles. I just made something very simple for the demo that people can test out. But now we've got a few more things to do, and we're almost done. So right now, the levels are looking a little sparse, so we're going to add in a couple of objects, just two objects really to just kind of give it some extra extra things to look at so it doesn't look quite so open. Uh, so they're pretty simple, they're just easy things. We'll apply, we can apply solids to them to make them actually block paths or you can just make them outside decorations, either way. So let's go ahead and jump into that real fast. We will double click, scroll on down to Sprite. This Sprite will be Stump. Go ahead and click. We will open up our folder. Go to Tiny Adventure Pack, Other, Miscellaneous, Tree, grab Tree Trunk, click OK. And now we'll see that this actually is a bit larger of a size. It's actually 18 by 16, which is fine. We don't need to worry too much about that. So what we're going to do is just make sure we change its hitbox, which is set up like that, which is definitely incorrect. So first off, we're going to right click, Set Bounding Box. And then once again, we're going to drag everything in two. But mainly first, we'll do that on the top and the bottom like we do everything else. And because it's two spaces extra because it's 18 wide, we're going to do the sides three just to keep it consistent with every other block that we've done. So one, two, three. And then we'll do the other side, which is one, two, three. Okay, and now for our origin point, we would normally put it in the top left. But again, because we are on an 18 grid, we want to pull this over one. And I think it's 16 high, right? Yeah, so we're good. So we just want to pull it over one. That way it sits properly in the middle of the 16 by 16 grid. We don't need any animation, so we can go ahead and close this out. So now we have an extra little stump here. Let's go ahead, just for the sake of it, add new behavior, solid. And we can leave it like that. And we will add one more thing, double click, sprite. This will be tree. We will open up and grab the tree sprite, double click. And actually, you know what we didn't do on the other one, which we need to do? We need to go back and draw a shadow because we don't have that. This one also needs a shadow. So first thing we're going to do is actually make this a little bit of a different size. I want to go ahead and first just grab everything up to the center around here. Select it. And we're just going to press the down arrow twice. One, two. That way we can select everything. So click once and move everything up to. Okay, that is perfect right there. So now we're just going to go ahead and choose a black color. Let's make sure this is all at 000, zero, zero and make sure our alpha is at 255. Well, not 255, sorry, 150. And we're going to zoom in, select our pencil tool, and we're going to start down here at the bottom. So we're just going to draw a line all the way down. Oh, don't overlap, otherwise, you get a full black, which we don't want. 
and make sure you select your bucket tool. Make sure flood fill is checked for this and we can fill in this whole section here. Back to the pencil. We are going to come up one from the bottom here. Go out one, two, three. Same on, other, on the other side, one, two, three. And then we are going to go up two from both of those. And then out one twice. So we'll go out one, two, one, two. And then from each of these sides, we'll go up two. So one, two, one, two. And then we just basically do this all in reverse now. So now it's one, two on the corner, one, two on the corners. And then we're going to go straight across, straight across. And we'll fill in this little gap up here. So we will be going from here. So we'll come out three, one, two, three. And then out three again, one, two, three. Just like that. One, two, three, one, two, three. And then these opening spaces, we can go ahead and fill in. So now our tree has a shadow. We can go ahead and, oh, actually we need to change its bounding box and its origin point because its bounding box is all wonky. So we'll go ahead and set bounding box. Now for this one, if you want to actually set um, a bounding box so you can have the player walk behind it or around it, uh, this is what I found works best for me. And I'm just going to give the actual coordinates here. So for the top left point, you will make it X10 and Y28. For the top right point, it will be X38 and Y24. Sorry, 28. For the bottom left, we will make it 10, and the Y is 50. And then for the bottom right, the bottom right is an X of 38 and a Y of 50. So that gives us a nice set bounding box for what we're looking for here. Last up, we need to set our origin point. And to make this kind of sit nicely, again, I'm just going to go with the coordinates that I have found works. It is X is 16, and Y is 38. And we can go ahead and close this now. So now this will sit nicely within our grid. If we zoom in, we can see the tree fits nicely within the grid, doesn't really overlap much. But the player will still be able to walk behind it if you have a tree overlapping an area. Okay, and now it's time for the stump. So we will just double click, go to resize. We will make it 18 by 18. Just change the height to 18. Make sure everything is unchecked and aligned top left. Click OK. So then we're just going to drop this down, go over to our pencil tool. As long as we still have our black selected with an alpha of 150, we are just going to draw around the bottom of the stump. Just like so. Although I don't really like these corners here, so go ahead and grab your eraser tool and just remove those corners. We can go ahead and close this now. And that looks like it's got a shadow. Perfect. Okay, so real fast, I'm just going to throw in some of these stumps and trees just to make it look a little nicer, and I'll show you the levels I made just uh, so we can see an actual playthrough of it. Okay, so I went through real fast. This is just going to make everything look a little bit more full. We've basically made ourselves a little forest here. So let's go ahead and jump through and see how it looks. I guess the one thing I should say is, uh, the one thing I used a whole lot of was the Z order. I don't usually keep the tab open for to showing the Z order. I usually just right click and use Z order, send to top or send to bottom. So if my trees were overlapping weird, for instance, if I tried to do this, that looks really awkward. Let's zoom in. And I should probably turn off the grid. There we go. I find it easier for layout, though. So this looks incorrect. But if we right-click, Z order, send to bottom a layer, now it's hidden behind, and it looks all right. OK, so let's go ahead and run through the levels I made. They're very, very, very simple. Um, we won't. <laughs> this won't take too long. But now we can see what everything looks like all together. So we have our level here. Player can move it around. I put a sign here with a little thing telling you that space bar is used to attack and you can think oh I'll use that to break that come on over 
and it looks a little choppy. We should really set up full screen. Once this goes into full screen, it doesn't get this choppy. For some reason on my computer, at least, um, if I'm playing in windowed mode a lot of the time with these like large sweeping movements, it gets a little choppy looking. But when I play in full screen, everything works out just fine. So we'll be adding full screen here in not too long. But I need to break this. I should just be running through these levels. Smack that. Smack into the hole. And hey, look at that. We made it to the chest. Boom. We win. Hooray. Now we are on to level two. And level two is also very simple. Break that. Move that. Move that. We can now get up to the next screen. But as you can see, I do need to add some more trees. It does still feel very empty on these outer edges so I can also always add more trees I probably will just to make this look a little bit nicer and a little fuller break that send that on over there we go this one's really letting you know that move rocks can move over another hole once it's been filled level two is now complete and then we can head on over into level three and what I've done is I have the camera start at the end every time so my camera is actually on the frame or on the scene. My camera is actually overlapping the camera check for the end of the level. So that way it always pans in at the start of the level from the end. And if you wanted to, if you really wanted to show that off, all you have to do is change the tween for the camera to move slower. And that'll fix all that. So this is probably the trickiest part of it, but since I know the answer, it's a lot easier. This might take one or two times of somebody attempting it to figure out just because it's not the straightforward path, but there we go. And now we have one. And of course, this is going to fade to black, and I don't have a level four set up for it to go to, so it's going to fade to black. I am going to use the level four as my congratulations, you made it screen, and then have you return back to the menu. So while we're talking about that, why don't we just actually do it? <laughs> 